Good afternoon, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live. And, uh, you know, I have actually been looking at some of the messages that people have been putting out about the Euphrates River. And, of course, as you can see here on your screen, this is exactly what the Euphrates River has become. Uh, at one time, the Euphrates was a mighty river. In fact, if you look out to those very edges of the plains there, that you can see the grass growing there. That was all river. That was every bit river. Uh, but now they're walking seven kilometers just to be able to get some drinking water. And the little trenches there, they're pumping that water out, doing all they can to try to get water to their farms, things like that. Uh, but the Euphrates has pretty much, well, it's about, about done, right? And a lot of people are looking at this and they're saying, wow, we're looking at Revelation chapter, I believe chapter 9, chapter 16, about the river drying up, especially chapter 16 of the book of Revelation there, where it makes the way of the kings of the east. So I decided myself to take a little bit deeper look at this. And, uh, of course, there you are, Revelation 16 here. Let me just back up here uh, where we're looking at, uh, oh, gosh, the Euphrates there. And um, so when you're looking there in Revelation, this is actually Revelation chapter 9 there, saying the sixth angel which I had, which had the trumpet loose the four angels, which are bound in the great river Euphrates. Uh, in chapter 16, we have the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. Now, I'm going to come back to these, all right? But before I do, this again, we want to take quickly here, I want to pull up... Um, Euphrates River there, and as I said, you know, where it, where it is drying up there, where they're showing the images, uh, things like here in this particular um, broadcast on Israel 365. Now, one thing that a lot of people may not be, may not realize, though, is that the water flow going down to Syria and Iraq, where, the, where all this drought is happening, has been cut off by Turkey for quite a number of years. This article here, going back to 1990, all right, Turkey cuts off Euphrates waters to Syria and Iraq. During the one-month stoppage, Syria and Iraq will get 75% less water from the tributaries of the Euphrates. Uh, of the Euphrates. The 1,460-mile-long river that has been the lifeblood throughout history for the area of once ancient Mesopotamia, the river already shows to become a sluggish stream before joining the Tigris at the Shat Ad Arab waterway in Iraq and emptying into the Persian Gulf. Uh, commando forces stood guard on heights of the reservoir area while 10,000 people watched the ceremony at the dam site about 60 miles north of the Syrian border. All right, so what are they doing? Turkey cutting off the water supply. And it's not the only time Turkey has gotten involved in that. Here we have here, we're going into the year, um, let's see, published September 27th, the year 2000. Turkey said it cannot give Syria as much water from the rivers, which the two countries share as it wants because of serious drought it suffers from report, uh, serious droughts it's suffering from, according to the BBC. So this has been different reasons Turkey has been cutting this water off. And of course, it's drying up the river there, the Euphrates, especially in the south. Now, if they just let the river run, um, Turkey would still have water. The people of Syria would have water. The people of Iraq would have water. Maybe not as much, but I don't think it'd be quite as dried up as what they're saying. But does that change biblical prophecy? Absolutely not. It doesn't. In fact, when you're looking at this, let's go back and take a look at some of this. This is really going to get interesting. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, and the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. Now, I think these kings of the east are not the countries there in the east, uh, like China and, and uh, Iran, things like that, ready to do war per se. But it could be a Nephilim type of king. And I may have found some interesting scripture to back up my claim on that. So just bear with me. I saw three unclean spirits 
like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. That's an interesting thought in itself. Unclean spirits like frogs. Now, they weren't frogs, but they were like frogs. You know, have you ever seen, I want to show you something here, reptilian uh, aliens. They actually have what some people determine as like a lizard head. All right. Not like this guy here. No, not quite like that. More kind of like that. Yes. Um, and the reason why I say that is because when you get more like that lizard head look, you get more like what a frog looks like. And I wished there, there is, there's actually a picture that is circulating on the internet that is, that is actually very accurate um, from what's been shared with me. I don't know exactly where that's at, but I have heard of that or I've seen it. Um, but I just was trying to see if maybe I might see that again. But anyway, more like a lizard head. And of course, that lizard head being would be more like a frog. I'm just kind of curious is all. All right, just sharing that thought with you guys. Now, if we go back and we look at this scripture here, the three unclean spirit likes frogs, comes out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. Nonetheless, though, all reptilians, for they are the spirits of devils working miracles which go forth unto the earth, excuse me, unto the kings of the earth and the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. And behold, behold I come as a thief and I blessed is he that watch, watcheth, keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. He, and he gathered them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon. Now if you'll notice... Those three unclean spirits like frogs, they're spirits of devils. They go forth working miracles and to gather the kings of the earth of the whole world to gather them for the battle of that great day of God, of God Almighty. I mean, all you got to do is look at what's going on in politics today and everybody is being pretty much gathered together for a possible war with Iran. Israel facing this uh, you know, as they can perceive it to be a threat of Iran. Every nation practically has representatives in Syria. Uh, we've been fighting in Iraq uh, all these years now. And then, we, of course, we have this other issue. So as I'm looking at this, and I'm looking at this from a scriptural perspective, then I realize something is really going on, something deeper than what we realize. All right, okay, so also looking at Revelation chapter 9, we'll back up here on this one. And the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses, prepared unto battle, and their heads were as the crowns like gold. Their faces were the faces of men. They had their hair as a hair of women, teeth were the teeth of a lion's, and they had breastplates as it were blessed breastplates of iron, and sound of their wings as the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle. And they had tails like unto scorpions, and they were stings in their tails, and their power was to hurt men five months. And they had a king over them, which is the king of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon. One woe is past, behold, there come two woes more hereafter. And the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God. That's interesting. Notice that. Four horns of the golden altar, which is before God. By the way, the four horns was what was built on the altar where they did the sacrificial services there in the times when Israel was a nation. Just keep that in mind. Saying to the sixth angel, which had the trumpet, loose the four angels, which are bound in the great river Euphrates. And the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour, a day, a month, a year, for to slay a third part of men. And the number of the army and the horsemen were two hundred thousands and thousands. And I heard the number of them. Thus I saw the horses and the vision. Them that sat on them having breastplates of fire, jasoneth and brimstone. The heads of the horses were as the heads of lions. And out of their mouth issued fire and smoke and brimstone. 
By these three was the third part of man killed by the fire, by the smoke, and by the brimstone which issued out of their mouths. For their power is in their mouth, and their tails, for their tails were likened to serpents. And they had heads, and with them they do hurt. All right. So, fascinating when we look at this here. Uh, and there's actually a suggestion in some of the Egyptian writings about a, a, a demonic entity that had a head like a lion and a serpent body. So just something to think about, right? So let's move on, though. Something I caught in Jeremiah chapter 46. Because remember, the scripture says, Loose the four angels that are bound in the great river Euphrates. That's what happens over there, right? So I want you to be able to see this here. Let me let me pull that back up here again real quick. Uh, here it is right here in blue. The sixth angel which had the trumpet loose, the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. And then we have in chapter 16, when the sixth angel pours out his vial, the great river Euphrates is dried up. There you have it in yellow. Verse 12. The saints shall poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. Now the kings of the east are being prepared when the river dries up, and so it seems almost to be giving you a timeline. But in Revelation chapter 9, we're reading about this, and we're finding out that the Euphrates is bound in there are the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. What kind of angels could be bound there? Let's may, maybe Jeremiah 16 or 46 uh, may have us an answer to that. I'm just, and there again, this is a conjecture. I can't say 100%, but I find it interesting. The word of the Lord which came to Jeremiah the prophet concerning the nations. O Egypt concerning, concerning the army of Pharaoh, Necho, king of Egypt which was by the river Euphrates and Carchemish, which Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, smote in the fourth year of Jehoiakim and the son of Josiah, king of Judah. Make ready buckler, shield, and draw near to battle. Harness the horses, mount ye the horsemen, and stand forth with your helmets. Furbish the spears, put on the coats of mail. Wherefore do I see them dismayed and turned backward and their mighty ones beaten down and they are fled apace and look not back. Terrors on every side, saith the Lord. The swift cannot flee away, nor the mighty man escape. In the north by the river Euphrates have they stumbled and fallen. Now hold that very close. In the north by the river Euphrates have, have they stumbled and fallen. Who has fallen? All right. Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, for one. And the Pharaoh, Necho, king of Egypt, for number two. All right. That's who's fallen. In the fourth year of Jehoiakim, okay, it was during the time of King uh, Josiah, king of Judah. Who is this like the Nile that rises up, like the rivers whose waters toss themselves? Egypt is like the Nile that riseth up, and like the rivers whose waters toss themselves, he saith, I will rise up, I will cover the earth, I will destroy the city and the inhabitants thereof. Prance ye horses, and rush madly, you chariots, and let the mighty men go forth. Cush and put, handle the shield, and loot them. Handle the bend, bend the bow. For the Lord of God of hosts shall have on that day a day of vengeance, that he may avenge him of his adversaries. The sword shall devour and be satiated and shall be made drunk with their blood. For the Lord God of hosts hath a sacrifice in the north country by the river Euphrates. Now, I mentioned just a moment ago out of the book of Revelation about the four horns of the altar, right? And we have here, the Lord of God of hosts hath a sacrifice in the north country by the river Euphrates. Let's jump back to Revelation. And the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel, which hath the trumpet, loose the four angels which are bound at the great river Euphrates. 
four angels were bound. It's an altar of sacrifice. The Lord God of hosts hath a sacrifice in the north country by the river Euphrates. Go up into Gilead and take balm, O virgin daughter of Egypt. In vain dost thou use many medicines. There is no cure for you. The nations have heard of thy shame, and the earth is full of thy cry. For the mighty man hath stumbled against the mighty. They are fallen, both of them together. Yuchadav, Nephali, Shnehem, Shnehem. They have fallen together. The word of the Lord spoke to Jeremiah the prophet, how that Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, should come and smite the land of Egypt. Declare ye in Egypt and announce in Migdal and announce in Nof and Taphanes and say, You stand forth and prepare you. The sword hath devoured round about you. Isn't that interesting? By the way, Nof and Taphanes is, is noted in uh, Arabic writings to be the fallen angels. Okay, let me just see if there was anything else I wanted to bring out there. I don't think of it as of yet. All right, now hold that one right there. I want to show something else to you. Psalms chapter 46. And by the way, when I share with you this, well, let me first go into Psalm here. Psalm chapter 46, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore will we not fear, though the earth do change, and though the mountains be moved into the heart of the seas, though the waters thereof roar and foam, though the mountains shake at, at the swelling thereof. There is a river, the streams whereof make glad the city of God, the holiest dwelling in a place of of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her in the approach of the morning. Nations were in tumult. Kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice. The earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our high tower. Do you know that word right there, high tower? In the Hebrew language, migav, excuse me, uh, misgav, is actually more along the lines of another dimension. Hmm. Come behold the works of the Lord who hath made desolations in the earth. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow, cutteth the spear and asunder, and he burneth the chariots in the fire. Let, let be and know that I am God. I will exalt among the nations. I will exalt in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. God of Jacob is our high tower. One second here. I may have to back up just a moment. Um. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The sound thereof shall go like the serpents, for they march with an army and come against her with axes and hewers of wood. Jeez. There is one thing I am missing that I was actually going to speak on. I'm trying to find that last little part there. Oh, I know what it is. Okay, here we go. In doing a cross-reference in some of these things here, I ran across the Genesis, the book of Genesis in the Dead Sea Scrolls, portions that we do not have in our own book of Genesis. This right here I have also in photograph form where I could actually put a little bit up here for you so you can see where we're coming from on this. It says, King of Zeboim, of the King of Bela, all these had a form and alliance to the wage war in the valley of Sidim. However, the King of Elam and the kings of allied with him 
were victorious over the king of Sodom and all of his allies, and they imposed tribute on them. Over twelve years they counted, paying their tribute to the king of Elam, but in the thirteenth year they revolted against him. In the fourteenth year the king of Elam positioned himself at the head of all the allies. They went up the desert road and were ravaging, laying waste from the river Euphrates. They routed the Riphites, the Ashtaroth, the Karnim, the Zemzamim, and the uh, Ammon and Emim, Shavim, Karathim, and the Horites and and Mount Gibal until they reached uh, El Paran. In the desert they returned and struck. The king of Sodom went out and encountered him together with the king of Gomorrah and the king of Adama, the king of Zebaim, and the king of Bela in battle in the battle, valley of Siddam against the Chador uh, Omer king of Elam and the kings who were with him. But the king of Sodom was defeated and fled and the king of Gomorrah fell in its pits and the king of Elam pillaged in the property of Sodom of Gomorrah and they captured Lot the son of, son of the brother. Now, eventually though, Abraham comes and defeats all of these kings as well that were in this battle here all the way over to the Euphrates River. What I find fascinating, though, are the names that are given here in the Dead Sea Scrolls in the book of Genesis. These are kings that are all fallen angel kings. That's what the Rephites or the Rephim, the Zamzamim, the Amim, the Horites, all of these are fallen angels. Okay? Now, if you go back and you look in the book of Revelation from the four horns of the golden... Okay, let's see. Uh, and saying to the sixth angel which had the trumpet, loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. I can't help but wonder when Abram defeated those kings that we find in the Dead Sea Scrolls, pictured right here, because the battle was hot, Abram defeats them, they routed the Riphites, or the Rephim, you could say, the Karnim, the Zamzamim, and the Amim. And of course, the Riphites of Mount Gibal until they reached El Paran. Now, minimum, we have four, possibly five kings, according to this particular writing that we have here. Now, if you go again, uh, and I'll just close that out real quick. If we go back to the actual website that I pulled up on this, you go down, you see Abram who was living in Sodom together with them and all of his cattle, one of the shepherds of the flock, he gets together his men and he goes and he battles against them. And he drives them out and he defeats them. Um, and of course we know Melchizedek meets him after the battle as a celebration. All right, here we go right here. Camped in the Valley of Dan, he fell upon them by night from their four sides. He killed some during the night. He defeated them and chased them, and they were all fleeing before him until they reached uh, Hilbon, which lies north of Damascus. He retrieved from them all that they had captured and all that they had looted and all, all their goods. Now, I'm wondering... If there is some correlation possibly between these kings, which are clearly a Nephilim kings, the Riphites, Karnim, Zamzamim, Emim, Horites, Mount, you know, and and right down to the uh, Horites of Mount Gibal. Now, I will show you, though, from the book of Deuteronomy, the Emim dwell therein aforetime of people of great and many and tall as the Anakim. These also are counted as Rephim and as the Anakim, but the Moabites called them the Emim. And Seir dwelt in the Horites aforetime. But the children of Esau succeeded them, and they destroyed them from before them, and dwelt in the steed as Israel did unto the land of, the, uh, of his possessions, which the Lord gave unto them. You remember when uh, Herod 
became the leader down in Israel. Herod was a descendant of Esau, and Esau was in amongst the Horites. And, of course, that is a Nephilim bloodline. So, as I look at what we have going on in Revelation... He has a trumpet, loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates, and the four angels were loose, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year for to slay a third part of men. The number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000 and thousand. I heard the number of them. Thus I saw horses in the vision, and them that sat on them, having breastplates of fire and jaseth and brimstone, and the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions, and in the mouths and there issued fire and smoke and brimstone. But don't forget, they got tails like serpents. I mean, this gets really, really, really interesting when you really begin to cross-reference some of these scriptures. And of course, we go back uh, again, uh, This in chapter 16, the sixth angel poured out his vial in the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. And we don't even get the number of the kings of the east. So could that be one and the same of those that are bound in the great river Euphrates? And of course, the ones that are bound in the great river Euphrates, it's the four angels. It's not kings, but angels instead. Are these angels that are part of the Nephilim, the fallen ones, the Rephim, the uh, Zemzemim, etc., could they be fallen angels that are being loosed and they anoint those kings that we find of Revelation chapter 16? And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are spirits of devils working miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth of the whole world to gather them to the battle that of that great day of God Almighty. Are we dealing with fallen angels that are being loosed out of the Euphrates? And is it symbolic? Are we seeing a time? Doesn't matter if Turkey was involved in, in cutting off the water of the Euphrates that we find in news articles going back uh, 20 years ago. And of course, you think anything changed between now and then? Of course not. Just look it up. Look it up. Look at all the articles on it. All right. It's everywhere. So the question is, could it be all this is just, you know, the, like I said, the book of Revelation gives us the prophecy. Yes, the river is, is dried up, but we see that everything that gets dried up, it seems to be all for a, um, it definitely seems to be part of what's going on. Uh, it seems to be that we are dealing with demonic entities. We are dealing with fallen angels. We are dealing with Nephilim. And then we have these men coming back into power. Netanyahu rises back up into power. We have the Brazilian president rising up in power. Trump hoping to also possibly capitalize, coming back into power. What would these three, what would this coalition do? It will bring about a new world order. You know, when I was sitting there discussing with one of uh, Trump's former advisors, we were looking at things from a spiritual landscape. Because one thing I learned about Merrill Argo is that everything that was happening there was real. Everything, it was not a setup. I used to wonder these things are just kind of fabricated, right? It was real. Trump really believes that if he gets back in power, he could save the nation. Biden really believes, and his administration really believe that if they can put Netanyahu, or excuse me, not Netanyahu, but Obama as a backup, and if something were to happen to Biden, then they would have a way to justify to bring Obama in because why? They believe that they're trying to save the nation or save the world. Whether they're doing it through their new world order, whether they're, whatever the case may be, they all, each one of these political factions really, they sincerely believe that they're there to save the day. 
But in above them, those little puppet masters of George Soros and, and Henry Kissinger, and then above them, you have the Rothschilds, etc., and all the other groups there. They're all controlling. They're controlled. They're the puppet masters that control the politicians, and the politicians may not even realize half the time they're being controlled. This is what I'm talking about, guys. This is how crazy this all is. But at the end of the day, what do we have? This is what I thought was so beautiful. At the end of the day, what do we have? When we're looking at Revelation, we're looking at the Euphrates River, we're looking at the drying up, we're looking at the kings of the east, we're looking at the angels being loose from the great river Euphrates, and then those angels are going to influence those kings. And what are they doing? They're all being brought down for that great battle, the Battle of Armageddon. Netanyahu has been a cheerleader for war with all the Middle Eastern nations from the very beginning. Do you think he's going to change? But you know, the thing is, is now I realize that Prime Minister Netanyahu, he really believes that what he is doing is truly of God. No yeah, doubt Yehuda Glick, and I know Yehuda Glick. No doubt Yehuda Glick also believes that he really thinks that he's doing a true thing. I mean, if you met Yehuda Glick, you would see the sincerity in the man, the way he really believes that he's doing a good thing. I, I, I tell you, friends, it, we're living in a very dangerous time, very dangerous time. Um. Please, you know, if God lays it upon your heart to support the work we do, IsraeliNewsLive.org. Right above the screen there, my name, Stephen Benun. I actually write, I mean, Denun is the way I write the books. I did it using a pen name, Stephen Denun. My real name is Stephen Benun. Uh, not as some people like to say, we're professionally known as Stephen Benun. Now, that's who I am, Stephen Benun. Uh, but we thank you for your support. P.O. Box 156, Sunbright, Tennessee. And I see on our website, EMFX in the cellular level. Listen, that's a great uh, video that was put together by Elizabeth, uh, who uh, works with us. Elizabeth does some great documentary stuff, putting on the armor of God and solutions for 5G and EMF radiations. Check out the video. Support the work we do. We do need your help. I can't encourage you enough for that. Um, and, and I really sincerely thank you. And uh, continue to pray for our family. We need your prayers uh, at this time, like no other time uh, in our ministry. So I ask you to pray for our family. Uh, if you want to donate online, you can just click that little button right there on the right there. It'll take you straight to a donate page there where you can donate for, uh, on there as well. Two coming on iConnectFX. We're going to also make it on iConnectFX where you can donate through our channel there. We thank you for that. Uh, and don't forget Patreon, Israeli News Live Patreon. We're always sharing new information. I've got some more things I'm hoping to do this weekend. So please join us there. We thank you for your kindness. And uh, an EMP shield, that's always in the link below there as well. I'll have that in there, that, that, that coupon code. Always remember to use a coupon code there. I don't want to be the doom, uh, gloom and doom guy, but there is always a very significant uh, risk on things that I continue to hear about, and especially with the war that is going on over there. In fact, I just got sent to me a picture of American soldiers there on the front lines in Ukraine, uh, and I've, I need to try to do a little bit of work with it. I don't want uh, anyone to be identified from some of that, so I, I will be um, uploading that as well. But anyway, God bless you. Thank you for listening. I keep having to check. I'm expecting a message here. Uh, to get some updates. So I'm hoping that we can get some updates to share with you guys as well. So, um, oh, and I just got a message. I know that Biden was in Egypt. Oh, by the way, uh, I do want to clear up one thing real quick with you guys as well. I was hearing, I've heard this quite a bit, some kind of missile was uh, fired over from North Korea that was shot down over Canada by the United States. That did not happen. Uh, that is not uh, uh, reliable information. So I want to make sure that you are aware of that, that that did not happen. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. Thank you for listening and God bless you.